some interesting brainstorming <coughs> mathematics for competitive examination. And we have just <coughs> given an assorted questions, interesting questions that will tickle your brain, interesting questions that will challenge your ingenuity, but in fact they are very simple and they are vital for competitive examination. So some interesting mathematics brainstorms for competitive examination from Easy Elite English. The first question, how many zeros are there? Now when we say how many zeros, we mean only the zeros at the end and not in the middle. The ending zeros often called the trailing zeros. How many zeros are there in 100 factorial and 1000 factorial? And as we know, factorial means the product of all natural numbers up to that number. So 100 factorial would be the product of 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 100. And 1000 factorial would be the product of all natural numbers 1 to 1000. <coughs> so how many trailing zeros would be there? Very easy. All you have to do is to find the sum of the number by 5 plus the number by 5 square plus the number by 5 cubed plus the number by 5 power 4 until the fraction is less than 1. When you get this fraction less than 1, then you stop the operation. So number by 5, then you divide by 5 square, then you divide by 5 cubed until the fraction is less than 1. So 100 square, 100 by 5, Next is 5 square, 25, 100 by 25. Next is 5 cubed, 100 by 125. Now this gives you 20, 100 by 5. This gives you 4, 100 by 25. And 100 by 125 is giving you less than 1. So you stop here and do not continue anymore. Because if you go on dividing, you will be getting smaller and smaller fractions, which would be less than 1. So total would be 24 zeros. You don't include anything that is less than 0. Don't include the point each. So till now, <coughs> we take 20 plus 4, 24 zeros. Now let's uh, take the case of 1000. So the number by 5 plus the number by 25 plus the number by 125, plus the number by 625, plus the number by 3125. That is 5, 5 square, 5 cubed, 5 power 4, and 5 power 5. This gives you 200, <coughs> 1000 by 5. 1000 by 25 will give you 40. 1000 by 125 will give you 8. 1000 by 625 will give you 1.6, but actually we will take only 1, we will take only the whole number. <coughs> we will not take 1.6, we will take only 1. And after that you are getting fractions less than 1, so we stop the division and also ignore this number because the value we are getting is less than 1, 0 0.32 less than 1. This means this is to be ignored and also further operation is to be stopped. So 200 plus 40 plus 8 plus 1, 1 1.6 is taken as 1, we take only the whole numbers. 200 plus 40 plus 8 plus 1, you will get 249 zeros. So 249 zeros, trailing zeros would be there in 1000 factorial. And that was quite easy. So any number you are given <coughs> and divide the number by 5, 5 square, 5 cubed and go on until the fraction is less than 1. Add it but take only the whole number and not the fraction. <coughs> Next, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 12 plus 1 by 20. It seems daunting but actually it is very easy. Express each fraction as 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. So the first is half. It can be written as 1 minus half or 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2. The next is 1 by 6, which can be written as 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3. Then you get 1 by 12. This you can write as 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4. Next is 1 by 20, which can be written as 1 by 4 minus 1 by 5. And you can go on continuing 
until 1 by 90 can be written as 1 by 9 minus 1 by 10. Now when you add all these, see that this will cancel. The intermediate things will cancel. Here also you'll get 1 by 5, that will cancel. And here you'll get 1 by 8 minus 1 by 9, that also will cancel. So only you'll get this one and the last one. You, all the intermediate ones will cancel. You'll get on the, only the first and the last. The intermediate terms get cancelled. So what are you getting? The first 1 by 1 and the last 1 by 10. So 1 by 1 minus 1 by 10 is giving you 9 by 10. There's a final answer 0 0.9. Find the square root of 7 plus 2 root 10 and 5 minus 2 root 6. Now break them into root a whole square plus root b whole square plus or minus 2 root ab. For instance, the first one. 7 plus 2 root 10. Now 7 can be broken as 5 and 2. Of course, you can also break them into uh, 4 plus 3, but 4 into 3 will give you 12, not 10. But 5, plus, uh, 5 into 2 gives you 10. And 5 plus 2 gives you 7. 4 plus 3 will give you 7, but, but 4 into 3 will give you 12. So we are taking 5 plus 2 because 5 into 2 is 10. Now 5 can be written as root 5 whole square. 2 can be written as root 2 whole square. And 2 root 10 can be written as 2 root 2 into root 5. That is a square plus b square plus 2ab giving you a plus b whole square. So when you take the square root, you will get root 5 plus root 2. But technically you should be putting a plus minus sign outside the bracket. <coughs> because when you take the square root, you will always get plus or minus uh, double sign. 5 minus 2 root 6, 5. Now you can write as 4 plus 1, but 4 into 1 would be 4. So we are writing as 3 plus 2 because 3 into 2 is 6. So 3 plus 2 plus 2 root 6. Now 3 is root 3 whole square, 2 is root 2 whole square, and root 6 is root 3 into root 2. So you are getting a square plus b square minus 2ab, that is root 3 minus root 2 whole square, and when you take the square root, you will get root 3 minus root 2. But again, as I told you, to be technically correct, we should be putting a plus minus sign over here. So that was Easy Elite English Educational Trust. If you have any specific requirement, you can WhatsApp us at this number or email us here because all of our services are always, always free of charge. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Continue watching us for more such interesting videos which would be useful in competitive examination and for school students. Till then, thank you.